very excited to start the pending karma series 10 areas where you have pending karma depending on where rahu is in your chart so wherever rahu is in the horoscope in your bhava chale chart not in the lagna chart there are 10 things that you will have in life all right so what is the first there will be some illusion which you will have related to that house mm -hmm. so suppose rahu is in your seventh house you may have some illusion maybe my spouse is like this <laughs> or maybe our marriage is like this maybe he's like this you know if it's third house you know she's like this your brother sister somebody so there will be some there will be there will be some illusion which you will actually believe and depending on your dashas that illusion may be broken or that illusion may continue for the rest of your life so it's very interesting because this illusion can make things very confusing uh, and it can make you clouded and it can overpower your decision making so rahu is cloud so what he does is suppose rahu is in a house so he will block your judgment from for that particular house so suppose you have rahu in seventh and somebody tells you something that oh maybe your marriage is not like this or maybe your spouse is like this and you are like no no it, it doesn't work like that when i know my spouse you know so your judgment will be clouded basically so therefore wherever rahu is sitting in the chart you need to understand that you should try to see things objectively based on facts not just on the basis of your emotions okay that's very dangerous because you may think wherever rahu is he will give you this feeling that you know everything is either very good or everything is not good at all and both are illusions all right number two rahu will rule technological uh rahu actually rules you know technological advancements so rahu is associated with technology innovations and you know futuristic developments so therefore wherever rahu is in the chart you will want to do something new in that area so you will want to bring in some technology you know maybe uh, if rahu is in the 10th you would like to work with technology and in in, in your profession you know or if rahu is in your 5th you know you would like like to indulge in some uh, technological gadgets with your children you know or maybe track your health and all this you know if rahu is in lagna especially so therefore your obsession towards uh, technology will come through that house okay that that's very important and he will also rule futuristic development so wherever rahu is you might have a lot of plans in that area okay in future i'll do this i'll do that you know so many so many exaggerated things you might think of all right number three rahu will rule uh, something foreign related to that house okay so Rahu, as you know, is related to foreign travels, you know, connections, influences. So it can happen that wherever Rahu is, you meet some person regarding that house who is of a foreign origin. So Rahu in seventh can in Rahu Dasha provided, not in general, not for everybody, not for eternity, not for all, not for anyone and everyone. Please, Rahu in the seventh in Rahu Antar or Mahadasha can give you a person with whom you might get married but that person will be from a different caste creed, community language religion okay because rahu rules foreign connections okay so if if rahu is in your 12th house you may travel to a uh, land where there is not much freedom because rahu represents restriction also to some extent okay so therefore wherever rahu is the foreign connection is there do not forget this okay so there is some pending karma with that foreign person that is why this person is coming to your life then wherever Rahu is, there is past life serious karmic exchanges which he will have. So if in Rahu Dasha you had something good or you had something bad, then it means that you are solely responsible for this. We ourselves are responsible. Okay, so this is happening most likely because there is some unfulfilled desire. So see, let me explain what it means. Suppose your Rahu is in the 10th house and something great happens in your profession. So it means there is some long, deep desire for your know, profession, name, fame, power, position, authority. That's why it's happening. So you may say, oh, well, of course, it's because there's some desire. No, it's not so simple. There is deep desire. This desire that you are having is from many, many, many lifetimes. Okay, not just this one lifetime. So therefore, 
wherever Rahu is, the karmic desire is there for many, many lifetimes. And that is why there is more suffering. Imagine you just desire something from one year and it doesn't happen. You are like, okay, but suppose you are desiring something from the last 50 years and it doesn't happen. One day your illusions are shattered, then uh, you kind of uh, feel very daunted, right? So, because it, it's very tough. The more, the lengthier the period, the longer the attachment. And the more the attachment, more the pain, okay? Number five. Wherever Rahu is sitting in your chart, in the bhav chart, there could be some issues with your mental health. Why mental health? Because imagine what, uh, think of what Rahu Ketu is, you know, they are north node, uh, north node and south node, right? So therefore that means, north node means exaggeration. So whenever you exaggerate something, see the moon is like here, you know, you can say here, north node and the south node. So what happens with Rahu is there is exaggeration and whenever there is exaggeration, you know, there is, you know, this um, ADD, ADHD, narcissism and all these things. So wherever Rahu is, that person or those things can take a toll on your mental health. Okay, very, very, very important. So Rahu's position can significantly cause anxiety, fears, irrational thoughts. So for example, Rahu is in your seventh house. You may have some weird fears, you know, oh, maybe my spouse is having an affair. Maybe my spouse doesn't love me. Not generic fears, but something very specific, it will be there, okay? Or Rahu is in your 10th house, you're like, no, no, I will advance in my profession this way, not that way, you know, something something which will give you a lot of fears, you know, it's like maybe, you know, you put some money into the stock market, you know, if Rahu is in the 5th, then you'll always be fearful that maybe this stock will go to zero or something like that, okay? So, number six, Rahu has this um, story, where it is, you know, uh, devouring, uh, it is trying to devour the sun and the moon. So therefore, wherever Rahu is sitting, you will have some pending karma with related to devouring somebody. So for example, if Rahu is in the seventh, you might want to devour your spouse. What is it? What does it mean? You know, devour your spouse. It means uh, you might try to prove that they are wrong and you are right. Or maybe somebody is trying to um tell you something about your spouse something secretive so then what happens is you will try to devour that person <clears throat> so rahu you have to understand is that tendency within us which tells us you need everything and you are you know everything basically so wherever rahu is you will always have a tendency to grab information or grab things or grab pleasure from there okay so therefore you will have a tendency to eat out things and you will over, you will over emphasize it. You will, um, you will, everything will be blown off basically. Okay. So for example, if Rahu is in the seventh, you will overestimate yourself. Okay. You will think maybe, you know, I deserve this girl of, of my dreams or this uh, Prince Charming or somebody. You will over exaggerate. Okay. Because that's what Rahu's job is. You know, his job is to create illusions. So you... So what would happen is you might uh, have some more morbid, like, you know, very high expectations and then that's not met. And because of that, you kind of suffer. Okay. So that's where the pending karma is. So number seven, wherever Rahu is in the chart, you may have some sudden karmic events related to that. Something very sudden, very quick, unexpected. So for example, <clears throat> Uh, it can bring like, you know, positive things or negative things into your life, you know, so seventh house, you know, so suddenly you discover something about your spouse, you know, something very sudden, okay. See, what is Rahu? Rahu is the shock that a person gets when a person is cheated. That's what Rahu is. So if you, if you have been cheated sometimes, not by your partner, but by anybody, then you know how, how painful it is, right, to be cheated, to be stabbed in the back like this, okay. So therefore, Rahu is that feeling. So wherever Rahu is, that person might stab you because of some karmic dealings again. All right. <clears throat> now, number eight, Rahu gets exalted in the sign of Taurus. Some say Gemini or you can say both. And he gets debilitated in Scorpio and <clears throat> in Sagittarius. So what does this mean? How does this impact you kar karmically? So you have to understand that when Rahu gets exalted in Gemini, see what is Gemini? Gemini is the sign of prostitution. Prostitution means unrestricted enjoyment. So in that sense, it's not like a blacklisting of the profession or the work. 
but it represents that desire inside us, you know, which just wants to enjoy, enjoy and enjoy, right? Enjoy and eat and enjoy and eat. So Taurus is a sign of eating and Gemini is the sign of sexual enjoyment. Unrestricted sex pleasure is seen from Gemini. So what does this mean? This means that wherever Rahu is, you might have a tendency to not be there, which is very weird. I mean, so suppose Rahu is in your 10th, you may have this uh, thing like, you know, okay, today I'm in this job, tomorrow I'll go here, then after six months there. So you are hopping, hopping, hopping. And when you are hopping around, then what you are doing is you are, you are doing something which you should not do. So for example, you are telling the boss, you know, okay, I'll do this project in six months, but you know, you know, you have a new job and you, you will leave it, you know, in like, you know, two months or something like that, you know, or two weeks maybe or two days. So you will, you might be tempted to speak lies and, you know, uh, give a false uh, persona about yourself. So it's very critical that you uh, don't do this. Otherwise, you will have serious karmic uh, karmic issues with people again. The karma will come back. Okay, so that is where the pending karma is. <clears throat> and Rahu, uh, number nine, as you know, Rahu has this nature of being unconventional. Okay, so... <clears throat> Suppose everybody is getting married at 28, you will say, no, I'll get married at 21 or I'll get married at 51. You know, so suppose somebody is getting married, everybody is getting married within their community, you will say, no, I'll marry different. If somebody is, ma everybody is marrying different, you will say, no, I'll marry here. So some rebellious thing will be there. And because of that, you may end up, you know, disrespecting your elders or uh, your guru or somebody like that. So that can create some pending karma. And because of that, uh, some uh, somebody may you know curse you or you know they, they may kind of uh, not like you okay so because of this nature your seniors your superiors may develop a bad reputation about you that you are not listening to them okay so now this is not good or bad but this can create a uh, pending karma for you more and more and more okay and it might happen that somebody behaves the way uh, exactly the way you behave with them okay so for example if Rahu is in your 10th uh, in the job you are very unconventional so your boss may give you some job which is very unconventional which is not generally done okay and you have not done it before so now you got to do it and number 10 last but not the least Rahu has deep connection to obsessions right <clears throat> So there could be, you know, this uh, compulsion, there could be, you know, um, you could have this intense desire. So Rahu, wherever Rahu is placed, you might forget all the other 11 areas of the chart and your all 12, uh, your all energies are focused in that one house. So what can happen is it can make the chart a bit imbalanced. And because of that, so imagine Rahu is in your seventh house. What you do, your all focus is on your marriage, your spouse, you know, what is he or she doing? Why are they doing like this? Why are they not doing like this? And, ah. So then what happens? You over expect, you over emphasize, you over deliver or you under deliver sometimes. And then what happens is you feel this emptiness within. Okay, so... Therefore, wherever Rahu is placed in your chart, do not get into obsessions. Of course, easier said than done. But you need to understand if you if you do not take this into consideration, then what happens is your expectations will keep increasing and nobody in this world can fulfill all expectations beyond a certain extent. So therefore, wherever Rahu is, try to, try to have reasonable uh, expectations. Only then you will be happy. All right. So, otherwise, you will create more pending karma with Rahu. So, I hope these 10 factors gave you a good idea about where your, uh, how the pending karma could manifest or how to not create further bad uh, or even sometimes good pending karma. All right. So, thank you so much for your patience. And if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you want a consultation from me, you will find my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and... Rahu won't trouble you. <laughs> Thank you.